Hello, my name is Brian Downey, and welcome back to part two of my 10SFG Zeus Interface Guide. So, in the last video, we covered the absolute basics of the Zeus Interface. In anything I do in this video, if you are confused or you do not understand something that I am doing, feel free to go back in the tutorial playlist and play the first video, which will explain I'm absolutely sure anything you're confused about in this video. If you find this video boring, or you find that the knowledge I'm covering you already know, which is quite possible since this is very basic knowledge, then feel free to go ahead and skip past the beginner and intermediate videos onto the expert, advanced, and master videos. Advanced, expert, and master. Um, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get back into the Zeus interface here. Last time we were here, uh, we were at a base. Now we are on an island in the middle of nowhere. And there should be goats, but there are no goats. Let's go ahead and press the Y key to get into the Zeus interface. Gonna be a small freeze on the screen while that happens. And we are in the Zeus interface. Let's go ahead and delete my little goat module here. And let's go ahead and go over to our modules tab, which is what we will be covering in the intermediate section of my 10SFG Zeus tutorial series. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of modules, and there's no way I'm going to be able to cover every individual module and what they do, and quite honestly, there's a lot of modules in here that you will most likely never ever use. So I'm not going to cover those. In fact, I'm going to cover the utmost basic modules today, and then possibly move on to some other things if we have a little bit of extra time. Now, let's go ahead and get started here. One of the first things I want to cover is that when I opened up the Zeus interface, my interface appeared right over my player unit. And in my previous video when I did so, the same thing happened. Now sometimes, you are going to open your Zeus interface, and it is not going to appear where your player unit is. So if we go back into the Zeus interface by pressing Y, as we can see here, my Zeus interface is nowhere near me. However, we can see a blue form marker over there, which is a drone. And with some sort of magical hacker ESP through the mountain, we can see my player unit. If we take a look on the map, we can see our camera icon is nowhere near our player unit. Now, say for whatever reason, you need to move your camera back to your player unit. You can do this in a myriad of ways. The first way being to, as we discussed in the previous video, middle mouse click on the map, and your camera will move around to wherever you desire by middle mouse clicking. For example, on top of our player unit. We are under the water, so we will press the Q key to rise out of the water, and then the Z key to lower back down. And now we are our player unit. If we want to go back to wherever our operation is happening, say in the city of Bagano, we can middle mouse click and take a look around. If we want to go back to our player unit, the more efficient and effective way, in my honest opinion, to get back to your player unit is to click on yourself in the interface on the map, press the F key to focus your camera on yourself, and then press the M key to close your map. Now, if you'll notice, we have the map here. And here's where we were, oh my, there we go. We have the map here, and here's where we were last time we were doing training on the Zeus interface at the 10SFG training ground. Now, we are, or I should say we have gone since the last video, from the south westernest most part of the uh, of the map to southeasternly 
the most southwesternly part of the map to the most northeasternly part of the map. And just get used to the slight pause when jumping in and out of the interface. Now why is that? Why did I put myself off in the middle of nowhere, where most likely no combat apparition will ever happen on said map? The reason I did this is because, as we are about to find out, our player unit is still a part of us as a person in the Zeus interface for the 10 SFG's purposes, and they are, indeed, still mortal. So, let's go ahead and dig up one of the most entertaining and probably a crowd-pleaser favorite module among new Zeus interface users, and that is the lightning bolt. So there's our Zeus lightning bolt. Now the easiest way to find things in the Zeus interface is to go ahead and type in the search bar for what you desire. In this case I desire a lightning bolt. L-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-G -I -I and there's my lightning bolt. However, you can, just like any other menu within the Zeus interface, scroll through, find what you're looking for. A lightning bolt for Zeus is probably going to be in the Zeus tab. Click the arrow, scroll down, and there's our Zeus Lightning Bolt. Now I am not a plebeian, so I will not be using the arrow key system for the majority of this video. I will simply be typing in what I desire, and I recommend you do the same. Just make sure you spell stuff correctly. So there's our Zeus Lightning Bolt. Now, just like any other object or unit that you would place in armor, if you click the Zeus Lightning Bolt module, a white module will appear following your mouse, as you see here. And whatever you click on, a lightning bolt will appear. Now let's go ahead and hit ourselves with a lightning bolt for scientific purposes. Now as we can see, we are critically wounded, and probably FUBAR. And thanks to the kind admins on the 10SFG server, I did not immediately die because of their ACE settings. Their ACE settings prevent instantaneous death, otherwise I would have been kicked out of the Zeus interface, most likely. Now, we are in critical condition, and we will most likely bleed out very soon, since there are no other players on the map other than myself right now. So what can we do about this? Well, in this case, I'd say we need some healing. So I'll go ahead and type heal into the modules tab, and I will find two... Ace Medical modules here, one called Full Heal and one called Heal, and for our purposes they do the exact same thing, but I want a Full Heal. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that one, and just like the Lightning Bolt, I'm going to select myself. Hit cancel, and as we can see, as if magically by the hand of God, my player unit is healed. If we go ahead and leave the Zeus interface, and stand back up, put our weapon down, open up the ACE interface and take a look at the men medical menu, we can see that I have no injuries. Now, your player base is going to have a tendency to get what's called armored, and that's where glitches or stupid nonsense happens and people get wounded when they're not supposed to. The most common module you are going to be using as a Zeus in an operation or on a training server is the Zeus heal module. Go ahead and press the Y key. Let the screen, let the free, um, uh, let the screen freeze as we go ahead and get back into the Zeus interface here. As we can see, our player unit is fully healed, and there's a little bit of blood and a lightning strike on the ground. Now, see, I'm making a mess of my superior officer's server, and I have a feeling that he would ask me to run some frosty miles now. So. I'm just going to go ahead and get those out of the way in the video so that I have some proof and I don't have to run them later. And um, for those of you watching this video, perhaps, you know, maybe you don't know what a Frosty Mile is. I envy you if you don't know what it is, but you're going to learn what it is today. So, we are at the 10 SFG training ground at the 10 SFG arsenal, and this is where the beginning of the Frosty Mile would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do a lap. I'd say Frost for screwing up his armor map would probably give me 
four, five frosty miles. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. So for this one, I'll go ahead and do a flyby with the Zeus interface, and we'll just uh, we'll take a lap around here. And as we can see, we make a right turn, follow this path around. We can hold shift to go even faster. We make another right turn here, sprint to the finish, make another right turn, run to the finish line, feel accomplished because you were the first guy to the finish line and realized that you left your team behind and get hit by a, loose, a Zeus lightning bolt. Like so. Now, I myself should probably run these frosty miles instead of just floating around in the Zeus interface, but we have accomplished one. Now, it would take an extremely long time to run, swim, back across the map. Now, I could spawn myself a vehicle and fly over here, but there's an even faster way to transport player units around the map for whatever reason you find, and that is a feature called teleportation. Now, we can go ahead and grab that in two different ways. We can either scroll down, go to Zeus, and it is not in the Zeus interface, so what we'll do is it is in the Ace Utility, and there's Teleport Players. Now, the other way we could do this is simply by typing Teleport in the search bar, T-E-L-E, -E. we don't even have to finish it, and there's Teleport Players. So, we're going to go ahead and click Teleport Player, place the module where we wish to be teleported to, which is the start of the Frosty Mile. We're going to choose myself, which is PV2 Downy B, and then we are going to click the OK button to confirm the teleport. And there I am. Now, if you've ever seen someone uh, jokingly go, hey, want to watch me run around the world, and then they kind of like twitch and stomp their foot on the ground and look at you and go, want to watch me do it again? That's very similar to what we're going to do here, so, hey, want to watch me run the frosty mile in a blink of an eye? What we'll do is we'll go ahead and go teleport player, select downy B, poof, there we go. That's one, want to watch me do it again, poof, that's two, well actually that's three, and poof, that's four, and poof, that's five frosty miles. It's very easy to do frosty miles when you have access to the Zeus interface, keep that in mind ladies and gentlemen. Um, but that should cover the two most important modules. Um, that you're going to use as a Zeus, just doing day-to-day -day operations in the interface after you've created your mission and you've briefed your players and they're out about doing their business. They're either going to get critically wounded by something that shouldn't have critically wounded them, or they're going to die and they're going to need to be teleported back into the AO, they're going to get lost, you're going to want to put them back with their team members. Perhaps they have to go to a different training ground, like let's say for example, I am an ODA member, and I am at the ODA training ground here. Here's the 10th spawn and the rappel tower, and etc, etc. But let's say I'm going to do joint training with the 160th SOAR today and do some hey-ho and halo training, right? I would want to go to the 160th airbase. Now I can go ahead and move my player unit to the 160th airbase, and here I am right next to the C-130, ready for Halo and hey -ho. A very, very useful module, just like the heal module, probably one of the most, more common modules you will be using in just day-to-day -day basic Zeus operations. Let's go ahead and talk about some other modules. One of the modules that you might find yourself using, and I deeply regret it if you do find yourself using this module, is the fire support module because most likely you will be dropping fire support on top of your player base and in my opinion as a Zeus this is a big no-no I almost never do this but for the purposes of the 10 SFG who like to mortar their player base um, let's go ahead and cover it and let's go ahead and cover what some of the different mortars do how much damage they do, how to identify where the damage is going, and how big the spread of the damage will be. And we'll go ahead and go way over here in the middle of nowhere where I feel I won't do any significant damage to the server. So, 
The first mortar we'll be looking at today is the 82 millimeter mortar. Now, just like every other module, wherever you place it, that's where the mortar is going to go. So, click in place, and here comes the mortar. Three, two, one, okay. there it is. That yellow-orange circle you saw around where the mortar was going to hit is the splash damage, and since this is a very, very small ordinance, it doesn't really have a kill zone outside of directly where the mortar hits. Now the splash damage will leave shrapnel and will wound your players and anything squishy, but for the most part vehicles and structures should be relatively safe. Now let's take a look at the absolute contrast, which would be the, um, the 230mm rocket. Now the rocket has a massive orange slash yellow circle and a red circle. Now the red circle is the kill zone. Anything within the red circle is going to be destroyed, be it a building, a vehicle, a helicopter, or airplane on the ground, or a player unit, they will die. The splash zone is exactly the same as with the 82mm mortar. Anything squishy like a human being not wearing body armor is most likely going to be severely wounded if they are within that circle. Now, one of the things I see um, Zeus interface users do a lot to kind of nudge their players in the right direction is, let's say this structure right here that I'm marquee selecting is my fire team. They will drop some mortars around the players to maybe nudge them away from somewhere they shouldn't be. Now see, none of those mortars, their rings never touched my player base, but that would definitely scare the life out of my player base, and I find this to be the most effective way to use mortars. Scare the life out of your player base, but don't actually kill them. There's not much that a fire team of players can do under direct mortar fire. With that out of the way, we've talked about some fire support, but let's talk about one more thing while we have the fire support tab open here, and that is bomb strikes. Now for this one, I'll go ahead and do a CAS bomb strike, and I'll do it on this house. Now a menu is going to pop up. It's going to take a minute, the server has to catch up, and I will go ahead and choose the stealth drone. There it is, the UCAV Sentinel. And as we can see, this is where the bomb is supposed to hit. There's the splash damage, there's the kill zone. Let's see where the bomb actually hits, since this is a laser-guided bomb. Should be coming any minute now. Let's see if we can see the... Um, there's the jet that's going to drop it. And there it goes. I heard the boom, but I didn't see the bomb. Let's go look over here. And it would appear that our bomb landed nowhere near our designated target area. Now, that could be a tremendous problem for a Zeus. Who knows what you dropped your bomb on. And it's something that a lot of Zeus interface users don't use because they feel it just doesn't work right. So let's make it work right. We'll choose our same target again. We'll name it Target Alpha. Attach Laser Target 4. Blue 4. And we'll click our pair. And so now there is a laser designated target for our laser guided bomb. Let's go ahead and do that CAS bomb strike again and place it on top of the laser designated target with the UCAV Sentinel. And as we can see, our marker is in the same place again. We can see our jet is on its way. And we're just going to go ahead and try and get a nice view. See what happens this time. And here comes our UCAV. As we can see, our target was destroyed. 
the bomb didn't go off into Guam, and it effectively hit its target. So remember, perhaps in the 10 SFG specifically, we might not be using the CAS fire support module, but be aware that some modules are going to rely on other modules to work effectively. Now, since our target is destroyed, we no longer need our target module. However, if we wanted to select a new target, we do not need to create a new target module. We can simply move our target module and rinse and repeat. But since I have no more targets and I have no need for fire support anymore, I'm just going to delete my target module by marquee selecting it and then pressing the delete key. So, please keep in mind that some modules rely on others and that you need to be aware of this when uh, using modules. So let's see, what are some other day-to-day -day Zeus modules that I tend to find myself using? Probably landing zones, rally points, and spawn units and supply drops, but we'll talk about those at a later date. I think we've really covered some significantly important modules. We've covered fire support, we've covered um, we've covered heal, we've covered te teleportation, the lightning bolt, which you should never ever use. Please don't use the lightning bolt, unless your player base is being absolute morons. But let's go ahead and talk about some more intermediate things we can do with the left side of the interface, which I've seen a lot of Zeus users just kind of close, because they feel like it's not very useful. So... For example, let's go ahead and select this MQ-9 Reaper here, and press the F key to focus on it. And now as you see, as you can see, I'm focused in on my Reapers. I have no idea why they're running, but they are, and we'll leave them as they are. Now let's say I wanted to go focus in on these barracks. I can select them, press the F key, and now I'm selected on them. Say I need to go deal with a player very quickly. Downy needs a Zeus heal. I can select Downy, press the F key, and now I'm right at Downy. And I don't have to use my map. I don't have to find Downy on the map. I don't have to manually move my Zeus camera. I can simply just select him and press the F key, which will really speed up your workflow as someone in the Zeus interface. And it's very important to keep in mind. And it's also extremely useful, say, if there's one specific item you really need to delete, you can go ahead and delete that. And these are folder-like, and they can be closed. So if I don't want to see my players, I can close them. If I don't want to see my civilians, I can close them, etc., etc., so on and so forth. And I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as it is for the next person who steps in this interface, as I do not want to cause any more trouble than necessary. Let's, um, let's take an intermediate look at some units again, and some modules we might be able to use with those units. Talk about some more day-to-day -day Zeus interface modules that you will most likely find yourself using. Now, I'm going to find a small town. Hulan looks pretty good to me. And what I'm looking for here is an enterable building. Nothing fancy, just something relatively simple that I could place some AI units in. And none of these buildings are really piquing my interest, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place my own building. So I'm gonna go units, empty, and then I think I'm just gonna go ahead and type tower in here. Maybe I'll get myself a cargo tower. In fact, G-O, cargo. It's another thing to be aware of when you're typing things into the search bar in the props section, there will be a little bit of lag. So we've got our military cargo towers and our military cargo HQs. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a military cargo HQ in green. So let's say my objective for today is to have the players assault this cargo tower and clear it out. Well, it wouldn't be very interesting to clear this out without any enemy AI. So, let's go ahead and spawn some enemy AI. 
best way to do this is to not be an idiot with your keyboard. Like so. And um, choose the groups so that we spawn more than one individual AI. Choose the op four. And we will choose... I like me some Middle Eastern militia. And we will spawn something reasonable, two fire teams. Now, how do we get the AI inside the building? Well, we could try just manually placing them in the building. That would probably be very time consuming and frustrating. Or, we could just kind of drag the unit, kind of roughly place them in or near the building that we want them inside, go to our modules tab, go to AI behavior, and choose garrison building instant. Click on any individual unit within said fire team or squad, and it's going to bring up a menu. Now, for this case, I think a 50 meter radius is good. This building is relatively small. I only want them inside, I don't want them outside. And I don't want them to fill evenly. What that means is they will evenly distribute among the buildings within 50 meters. I only want them in this specific building, so I'm going to make sure that's no. I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button, and poof, they are inside the building. And if we go ahead and take a look inside the building, they are standing inside the building. Now, for my second fire team, let's go ahead and select them, put them in the center, and this time we're going to do the same thing, garrison building instant, but instead of choosing inside only, I'm going to say no, click OK, and now we have AI units pulling security on the roof. Now, a neat little feature that a lot of people are unaware of when doing this is, say you want an AI who's not going to move. Let's go ahead and choose, uh, for this one, for this example, you use an Islamic State bomber. We don't want him to move. We don't want him to wander off. We kind of just want him to be where we want him to be. Now, if this dude was in, say, a fire, one of these two fire teams, and I can add him to the fire team by selecting him, holding control, left click dragging onto one of the other guys inside one of the other fire teams, now he's going to move himself. And no matter how many times I position him where I want him, he is going to try and move back with his fire team. So, I have two options here. Obviously, I can grab him, left click, control and drag, and separate him from his unit. And now he is an individual, and he will not move to try and stay in formation. However, once the players start engaging, he will run off and attempt to assault the players. If I want him to sit and defend the base, what I can do is I can garrison a group of AI, then I can select one of said AI, say perhaps this guy, where I feel he is not being particularly useful. Maybe this guy. And we'll grab that guy. And move him. And since he is garrisoned, no matter where I move him, he will not move. And now I can place him as I like. So, if you wish to manually tweak AI that you have garrisoned, you can do so. Now, if you need to raise or lower an AI object or um, unit, you can do so by holding down the Alt key, left clicking on the unit to select them, then holding down left click and dragging up or down. Now, one of the nice things about these structures is that the AI will snap, or object will snap, into place. And in this case, he is snapping to the roof. I'm going to go ahead and let go, and now he's on the roof. Now, if I want to paradrop, said AI unit. I can go ahead and lift him way up into the sky. Oh, and there's something we're going to notice here. If I ascend 
as Zeus, and I'm holding the Alt key and moving this dude around, he's just going to go away from me instead of up. And if I go down, he'll come back towards me. So let's go ahead and let go of the Alt key and reel him back in. There he is. Now let's raise him up, let go of the Alt key, raise up, pull him back towards us, hold the Alt key, bring him back up. That should be high enough, and hopefully he para-drops and doesn't fall to his death. And there's his parachute. And as you can see, a group of AI units raised above the ground past a certain height with the Alt key. When you let go, they will para-drop. Now this is not the most effective way to power drop an AI unit, but it is a way to power drop an AI unit. We can go ahead and do that with the entire squad if we wish. By taking a step back, selecting the squad, holding the Alt key, left clicking on any individual in the squad, raising them high up, and then letting go. And now we have an entire fire team power dropping. And we can go ahead and marquee select them. Hit the delete key and wipe them off the face of the earth. Now, sadly enough, you cannot para drop fortresses. They will simply float at whatever elevation you put them at. And an interesting thing to notice here is that the stairwells intentionally dip below the surface of the object, and this is so that you can position an object on an uneven terrain and still make it feel natural. So, let's go ahead and do that. Now, natively, Arma placed this very well, and I'm probably not going to do as good of a job, but I will make an attempt. So, I have the object above the terrain, I'm going to hold the Alt key, pull down, and move it off into Guam. Move it back towards me, look closely at it, hold the Alt key, raise the object, and as you can see, this is a very frustrating, but nature of the beast sort of thing with Arma, where as you raise or lower something, it's going to come further and away from you, and it's just something you really have to get used to. The snapping feature is, however, very nice, and the object looks convincingly, for the most part, accurate to as it should sit in the environment. Let's go ahead and delete it. Now, what if I want to create a patrol, say, around this town? I can go ahead and select a group of AI units. In this case, we will use a Middle Eastern Militia fire team. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could select all the units and then right-click to create the initial waypoint hold the control key, right click again, create an additional waypoint, create an additional waypoint, create an additional waypoint. All, all the while I'm doing this, I am holding the control key down and right clicking, create an additional waypoint, create the final waypoint to close the loop, and double click on the last waypoint, and choose cycle. Now, my AI units, hypothetically speaking, should patrol this area, and at any given time, I can manipulate their waypoints and change their patrol. However, this is a very time-consuming way to create a radial patrol around an area, and there are more effective ways to do the exact same thing. So we are going to delete and try again. We'll go ahead and place down a fire team this time. And we'll go ahead and choose in the AI Behavior tab, Patrol slash Loiter. Now we'll click on any individual within the unit and drop the module on top of them, and a menu will appear. Here is the radius for our patrol. In our case, I'm going to make mine 75 meters in radius. The group behavior is going to be relaxed. Their direction around said target area is going to be counterclockwise, meaning to the left and the delay at waypoint is going to be none. So they will just move from waypoint to waypoint without stopping. Let's go ahead and click OK and see what happens. Now, 
this patrol pattern isn't exactly what I want. I want them to patrol around the perimeter of the fence of this compound, but that's perfectly fine. I can marquee select the patrol waypoints and start manipulating them. Oh my. And it would appear that I have damaged the waypoints by accidentally right clicking. Silly me. So what we do is we delete the AI and we start again. You don't need to delete the AI. I'm just deleting them out of frustration. Let's go ahead and grab our patrol loiter module. Once again, everything is saved as it should be, but our patrol pattern just isn't what we want it to be. So remember, click off so that you're not clicking anything else. Make sure you only have one waypoint selected at a time. Select the waypoint, manipulate it to your desire, select the waypoint, manipulate, marquee select. You want to keep the cycle and the first waypoint close together. Move them over there. Move that waypoint there. Move that waypoint over to that corner. As you can see, I'm clicking off each time. and I'm being very careful not to select a waypoint and then right click because I will delete my patrol and they will move directly to wherever that waypoint is that I create with right click. So always be sure when you're done manipulating waypoints to click off blank into space before you rotate. And there we go. Now we have our patrol patrolling the perimeter of the compound. Let's go ahead and send in a special operations team to assault the patrol. And before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at these buildings and see if there's anything worth garrisoning, which there really isn't. So I will simply put one more fire team inside the base, but I don't want them to stay together. In this case, I want to separate them so that I can move them around the compound. Now, the way I'm going to do this is simply by clicking on the leader, left-clicking and dragging, and letting go. And now, I've created a new leader. So, I can left-click and drag on him, separate, left-click and drag on him, separate. Now I have a bunch of individual units, and I know that because they have a diamond over their head, signifying that they are the leader of their individual. Now I want to put one unit kind of in each corner of the compound. Now let's go ahead and have a special operators group assault from the woods into the compound. We'll go ahead and select blue four. We'll choose USA SOCOM, Infantry MARSOC, and we'll choose an MSO team. Now this MSO team is a little overkill for the group of OP4 that I have placed. I have 12 here versus 8 there. Now to make this a little more fair, I will simply click some of the individual units, specifically 4 of them, and delete them. And now we should have an 8-man MSO team. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Very good. Now, if I want to move my MSO team, forward to assault the compound that I've created, all I have to do is click on the MSO team's leaders, little rectangular blue icon, right click in the center of the compound, and then I can take it a step further by double clicking on the waypoint and choosing seek and destroy. I can choose the behavior of the units, in this case I want them to use a staggered column. And I'll have them move quickly and I will have them fire at will and engage at will, just to speed this up. We'll go ahead and click OK, click off, and watch the chaos ensue. Now this will look a little more interesting if we go ahead and clear out the Zeus interface, and we can do that by pressing the backspace key. Let's watch and see what happens. So this could simulate your player base assaulting a compound on a mission that you have created. 
or this could show examples of both your player base defending an objective and AI assaulting it, or your players assaulting an objective controlled by AI. Let's go ahead and go back into the Zeus interface to see what's going on here. Now, if we notice, these AI's icons are black. Now, what that means is that they are dead. Now, in order to save load on the server, let's go ahead and take a step back here. In order to save load on the server, it's good to delete dead bodies. Now, it might kill the immersion of the players if you delete dead bodies that are directly next to them, but at the end of combat, if the players are leaving the area, it's always a good idea to go ahead and delete those bodies. Save a little wear on the CPU, and uh, some frame rates for the player base. Now it looks like our MSO team, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, has taken a casualty. Two casualties. Their team leader is down. What will the AI do without their team leader? Let's find out. If I delete their team leader, a new team leader will be created, and he is dead. So, a new team leader is created. I think this shows a good example of a sort of a attack, ambush, defend, etc. type of behavior that you can do with AI. And again, some more basic very rudimentary, rudimentary mission creating materials. In this video we covered Zeus healing, uh, the Zeus lightning bolt as much as I regret covering it, fire support which I also regret covering, um, the, Zeus, uh, the Zeus lightning bolt, Zeus heal, fire support, patrol and loiter, garrisoning AI, and uh, some basic AI manipulation, um, and of course teleportation. Now these are all day-to-day -day things you're going to be doing as a Zeus in the Zeus interface with a player base. You're going to be what they call an AI pusher. You're going to be kind of nudging friendly and op or AI around to do the behaviors that you wish them to do. You're going to be placing AI that the player bases are going to be fighting and having them patrol, say, objectives. And in future videos, we will go ahead and look deeper into perhaps creating a small mission and having it executed by some AI. Um, I hope this was informative. I hope this was um, an insightful look into the very basic, rudimentary, day-to-day um, -day things that a Zeus needs to know how to do and the things that you will most commonly be doing as someone who is dedicated to the interface for the entire mission. And of course, the most important thing we covered today is the fact that your player, um, your body, if you will, your player user is not immortal and that they need to be in a safe area um, when you are in the interface. Uh, as usual, I hope you found this informative. I hope you didn't find it horrendously boring. And if this information was way over your head, as I said at the beginning of the video, please go watch part one, which is the absolute beginner guide. And if this information was way too easy and way, way um, below your known skill level, known knowledge, then I apologize and feel free to go ahead and move and skip ahead to uh, perhaps the expert or master classes. Um, it's always good to maybe just kind of skim through my videos and see if I'm covering anything that you're unsure of. But yes, if you feel like I'm covering something that you already know, especially in these first three videos, um, feel free to go ahead and skip ahead to the expert or master classes. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for your time.